coach will make an opening statement, then we'll take questions. Um, kind of got the um, got the feeling of how the locker room was before the game that these kids were taking Little Rock for granted. Uh, it wasn't the same energy. Uh, don't know why. Uh, don't have any excuses for that. And when we came out on the floor, it got down 9-0. Uh, I kind of like when we got down the last five minutes, it was a close game because I kind of want to know what my team is made of. We were at home. I wanted to see who was ready uh, for the moment. Uh, every game doesn't have to be a blowout because you need some tests, and this was a big test for us. New Little Rock was going to be pretty good and pretty solid. They had been playing some good games on the road against some good teams, and you know I was, I was, I was pleased that even though we started the game off slow, that we ended the game really well. Uh, Coach, I asked uh, DJ and Precious about the, the, the Wiseman ruling from the NCAA, um, and they said they weren't aware of it. Did you guys not discuss it pregame at all? No, actually, we didn't. Um, it's just something that it just is what it is right now. It's taking on a life of its own, so I'm sure they'll see it after the game. I mean, yeah, later. <coughs> Coach, I know you said you got off to a slow start. It was something they were doing or something you weren't doing, or why the reason for the slow start? Sorry. I mean, young team. I can just only see, like, when we, we put things in because we're well prepared. It was Coach Miller's scout, and we knew exactly what they were going to do, and they came out and did those things. But like I always say, even going into the Oregon game, you can never account for the nervous energy in a kid. And then when you're doing it 5-on-0 and 5-on-5 five five in practice, it's different once you get in the arena. With the team that does it every single day, you can only try to – uh, kind of mimic the stuff that they do to a certain extent, but they do it every day. So it's hard to get our scout team to kind of get to that level. And they do a good job about what they, they, they forced us to shoot outside shots early in that zone. And every time we got into the middle, they just kind of converged on us because they wanted us to beat them from the outside and not on the inside. So they did a great job. Coach, what was your reaction when you uh, saw the ruling in the NCAA? I didn't have one. Do you, were you guys glad to – at least find out a number? Yeah, we were definitely glad to find out about a number. We were, we had been waiting on that. Uh, Penny, what did, what did James react at all? And from, like, uh, you know, I didn't ask him. I didn't ask him about anything. We just kept going business as usual. Uh, Coach, you got a big game coming up on Saturday um, against Ole Miss. How, how important is it to get off to a, a good start in that game? Well, obviously, when you're at home, it's your home turf. You want to get the crowd in the game. You want to start off early uh, with the with the lead. You want to make them fight from behind. You don't want them to get in get into your gym and then gain control of and the momentum of the game early to get comfortable. You want them to be uncomfortable the entire game. So I feel like it's important. It's not the end of the world, but you want to get a good start, especially with the young team. Benny, I know at the beginning of the season you were talking about how you're just going to kind of let them figure things out. You're not going to run as many sets. Where are you at with that right now, and do you feel comfortable with what you're calling and their ability to kind of run that right now? Yeah, I think right now we're limited because everybody's playing a zone. So they are having to figure it out on their own. They are having to understand how to screen inside of the zone, how to make plays for each other, uh, and they're figuring it out. We're seeing it uh, on a nightly basis because no team is really playing us man-to-man -man the entire game. You mentioned, Penny, that the team needs tests. What kind of test is it going to be for the next 12 games? Or 11, I guess, or 10 now. Yeah, it's going to be a big test because guys got to grow up. You know, that um, that energy that James brought offensively and defensively is not going to be there. So, I mean, it allows other guys to be able to step up. So it's going to be huge for us to get the game plan, go out there with the energy, do it collectively as a group, and, uh, and just depend on each other the entire game that uh, and be confident that we can go out there and get it done. Coach, uh, you mentioned – Excuse me. You mentioned before about how important rebounding, uh, re winning the rebounding battle, and not turning the ball over. Where you were successful on both of those columns on the stat sheet. How much emphasis have you been putting on that in practice? Well, obviously, rebounding has been you know our Achilles' heel. You know, we weren't really rebounding the ball well, especially when we go to a smaller lineup. The guards aren't getting back in there and fighting and rebounding. But we found ourselves winning a lot of these battles on the rebound. So. It says a lot about just scrapping and fighting, but we can do better. Uh, us turning the ball over is bad. We had 19 turnovers tonight, uh, and they really did put a, a, a huge amount of pressure on us. Us turning them over 26 times is huge because that's what we need to do. We just didn't capitalize on it enough, but there's two games back to back with forcing 52 turnovers. We have to be able to turn those into points. Penny, what are you telling your shooters at this point? It's a third straight game they struggled from outside. They just got to keep shooting. I think it's in their head now because they're turning down shots. 
And uh, that's to me, that's very selfish because you, you're a shooter. You got to shoot until you make. And I don't want them turning down shots uh, to drive the ball into the lane. Now, if somebody's closing out on a really good contest like Oregon was, then you got to drive the ball into the lane. But if they're stopping short and giving you shots, you got to shoot with confidence. Hey, Penny, yesterday, yesterday um, DJ said we pretty much seen all he's going to do. How much higher is his ceiling? And talk about the film Mar Reese tonight. Yeah, DJ is uh, is a superb talent. Uh, he's actually learning so much. Um, this this college um, uh, offensive sets and defensive changes and everything is kind of overwhelming for all of the freshmen, especially him. But man, he gives his effort. He goes out there and works hard, even if he doesn't know what to do. He's gonna give you that effort, and the sky is the limit for DJ. He's a he's a he's an excellent talent. And Isaiah Maurice, you know, I apologized to him last game because he came in and got nine rebounds like 11 minutes or 12 minutes. Then he came in again tonight to get nine rebounds in 14 minutes. Just got to find more minutes for him. So I'm proud of Isaiah. Coach, um, in a saga that's involved so many different adults and uh, the, the punishment so far coming in on, you know, a kid, a 19, 18-year-old kid, um, I mean, do you, do you feel that's fair? Well, I stated from the beginning that I didn't think it was fair, but... There's nothing that I can do about it. I mean, obviously, James should be on the floor. That's just how I feel. Penny, when, it, when a game is, clo is uh, called as closely as that one was, and a lot of fouls, how does that hurt your ability to get up and down and play the way you want to really play? Well, it changes the, the game plan totally because now we can't get up and take things away. We've got to play uh, kind of safe, and then it gets into their favor because now they're going to be more aggressive. And uh, they started driving the ball down the lane because our guys started feeling like if I get too close, then they're going to call a foul. And they started driving the ball down the lane, which is what we don't want. But we're we're one of the worst fouling teams in the country right now. We definitely have to clean it up. Uh, Coach Lester uh, Keonis has consistently been your leader in minutes. Can I talk about what you've seen in, from him in his game that, that allows you to trust him so much on the floor? Well, it's just his toughness. Uh, it's what he's willing to do out there, just the dirty work, take charges, get tough rebounds. Uh, run the way that I need him to run the floor, uh, try to make sound decisions. It just seems like, you know, that year of prep that he went grad, that he's a little ahead of all the other freshmen when it comes to understanding and, and what he won't give up. And I trust that when he's out there that he's going he's gonna to play his heart out. Hey, Coach, statistically, why were you guys not able to get DJ going in the second half to ride that momentum he had the first half? Um, you know, the games, every, everything changed in the second half. They. They basically didn't let us run the same things that we did. And DJ basically got all those off hustle points. He was offensive rebounding the ball. He was getting steals. He was doing all that in the first half. Obviously, we got to get him the ball more. I mean, that's up to the guards and to the team. But it was like pressure's his turn in the second half. It's like he and DJ's role was reversed. And DJ has to, you know, he's not worried about scoring. We need him to score more. When he has a half like that, you got to come out in the second half and try to repeat. But he just kind of is into trying to win the basketball game. I wish he would get more aggressive. I keep saying that to him, but he just hasn't found out the way to do it uh, with the group that he's with right now, and I'm sure he will. Coach, I know you said from the beginning that you guys wouldn't have changed the way you've approached this, but now that you have a number, do you guys still stand by the, the way this process has all played out and the way you guys have, have uh, kind of done things? Um, I don't really know what else to say about it. I mean, I don't know what you want me to say. I, I feel like James should be on the floor. So the process of what's going on is they're in control. You know, they make the rules. So we just have to abide by them. Got time for one more. Coach, you mentioned that uh, DJ got a lot of his points off of hustle points. Is he leading your hustle board right now? Uh, he would be one of the ones that's really high. Uh, and, and you know, I can't, it's like I can't be out there in the guard. I, I challenge my guards, because DJ is one of the guys that can beat his man off the dribble. I challenge my guards to get him to basketball, because he is a weapon. And unfortunately, with a lot of talent and a lot of young guys, they might see things differently in one half than they do in the second half. But we have got to find out why he can't put two halves together, because he's just that explosive and he's that talented. And the way he, he held us together in the first half, he definitely needed to come out in the second half and use the same aggression. I have to watch film and see what, what actually happened. A couple of times throughout the games this year, I've caught myself saying, wow, Alex Lomax has gotten better since last season. Can you speak a little bit about his improvement? Well, Alex kind of, last year, he kind of tried to change his game up coming into his freshman season. He wanted to be more of a scorer, and it kind of took away from his defense and his playmaking. I think this year he kind of got back to himself. 
where he's going to defend really hard, push the ball up the floor, try to find guys first, and then score last, and then things are just working better for him doing that. That's what he's always done. Last thing, what type of shoes are you wearing tonight? I've really been trying to figure that out tonight. This is uh, Louis Vuitton. Okay. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you.